Hello Davey here. Okay, about a month or so ago I got in contact with Arctic to see if they'd send over some thermal paste to support the channel for testing for the next couple of years. I've been using Arctic MX2 for about two years now, doing all the testing on the channel, CPU, cooler and case reviews, uh, and it's lasted me a fair while. I've still got about a third left of this 65 gram tube. So they sent over two uh, 45 gram tubes, totaling 90 grams of MX4, and they said, eh, well you can make a video about it, reviewing it, and you know, see what you think about it. So, that's what I'm doing now. What I'm going to do is pit the MX4 against MX2 head-to-head uh, -head showdown to see which one performs better. I'll be doing a thermal test and a, or I have done a thermal test, and I have done this sort of spread test with a sheet of glass uh, to see how they both spread out. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, spoiler alert, not a massive amount of difference, um, and it's we'll we'll go into it a little bit later as to as to kind of why that is, but not not really why it is, but thoughts and things about that and what Arctic says about that as well uh, and what they say about the differences between the two of those. So without any further ado, if you want to pick any of these up, go to the Amazon affiliate links in the video description. If you pick up 2019 edition, the ones with this red banner on the side here, you do have a chance to win once a month. Well, you put your, you scan and you try and win a thousand dollars, not per month, but once there is every month there's a draw and if you put yours in, you might be able to win, so so that's that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the, the application situation and then into the thermal testing. Okay, we're not going to spend too much time on the testing footage since it's more about the results of the testing rather than the testing itself. One thing I think is absolutely critical to a review regarding thermal performance is presenting not necessarily the application of the thermal paste, but rather the outcome of that application. So while I am showing a ludicrous amount of thermal paste being applied, I'm doing this to more so guarantee full coverage, preventing me wasting a couple of hours doing some testing, and then finding out it was poor coverage, and then having to retest, which would suck. Uh, it's actually more important that we take note of how the thermal paste spread out. Uh, just a note on the side of that, more thermal paste, doesn't really make much of a difference compared to the optimal amount because more will just squeeze out of the sides and just be wasted. It, it's not optimal, but it's better than too little. Something that's worth noting is there's not a huge amount of difference between MX2 and MX4 with regards to applying or cleaning the thermal paste off the IHS or cooler. MX4 is slightly thicker than MX2, but not so much so that it makes applying or cleaning off noticeably more difficult. Although if I had to side with one based on ease of application and cleaning, I'd probably side with MX4 since, in my experience, it's less likely to drip if you over apply, which you should be avoiding anyway because it's just a waste. Unfortunately, I somehow managed to both over apply MX2 and miss the corner of the IHS due to a poor mount. Uh, now this really isn't going to make much of a difference since I've actually run through all the tests with both pastes with each cooler twice which includes three separate runs of each benchmark with system restarts in between and the results have negligible differences. Practically it's not that big of a deal since there's not a lot going on under the corners of the IHS but either way it's not something I aim to continue doing in the future. So closing the practical demonstration of the thermal paste application, all but one went completely well and there was a minor issue which turns out to not actually be that much of an issue afterwards. But here's something I want to know from you guys. Looking at the way I need to remove the motherboard from the test bench in order to access the back of the motherboard tray, because this test bench, the Core P1, decided that zero access behind the motherboard tray without removing the graphics card and entirely disconnecting the motherboard was the only option that should be available, and I understand the Core P1 is not necessarily a test bench, more of a, you know, open system, uh, do you think for the sake of more practical and realistic cooler reviews that I should cut a hole in the back of the motherboard tray to allow access to the back of the motherboard through the rear of the test bench? To put it more simply, should I take an angle grinder to the Core P1 to access the back of the motherboard without removing the motherboard entirely in the future? If that's something you'd like to see me screw up in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Just to add to the info on the spreadability of these thermal pastes, not a word, I thought I'd conduct a visual experiment. So, I measured out some lines, 2mm apart, and I put down roughly equal amounts of thermal pastes, more than would be used on a CPU IHS for a, a cooler. Uh, MX2 is on the left, and MX4 is on the right. Then after 7 minutes, this is all sped up by the way, I got bored. So, I decided to show the paste being spread out under glass. Uh, in this case, under the edge of a roughly 800 by 500 by 5mm sheet of glass. Uh, and after about 75 seconds, it looked like this. And with a fair amount of pressure eventually leaning, uh, leading up to me leaning on the glass panel, it looked like 
this. So I can gain from this is accounting for me incorrectly sizing the amount of thermal paste I used for each. They're really not that dissimilar in terms of spreadability, not a word, but perhaps MX2 spreads out a little more easily. I even wrote down MX4. I, I meant MX4, not MX2. It's clearly more spread out on the right, which is MX4. And again, in terms of cleaning it off with just a spray of some WD-40 electronics cleaner, because it was around, both started instantly dissolving and with a single wipe it cleaned most of both away. So let's get into the results of the tests. This is the first time you're seeing this kind of testing on this channel, including fan speeds, sound levels, and a new implementation of logging data via hardware info at a 100 millisecond polling rate. I'll break down all the details of this in a future video, but for now, let's run through what I found out. Pro95, albeit an older version which isn't quite as aggressive as the newer versions, is my go-to for a full load thermal test. This first set of tests acoustically limits the fans to 36.5 dBA, or decibels with an A weighting, at a range of 40 centimeters at a 45 degree angle from the fan of the cooler. To the right you can and will continue to see stats of the coolers, this is just a nice reminder that it's always there for you to consider fan speed, cooler size, acoustics later on, etc. when you're looking at the performance of each benchmark. Speaking of which, looking to the left of the benchmark results, one of the two coolers I tested both paced for, the small 37mm L9i, just didn't have the means to prevent the system from outright crashing at this fan speed to hit this decibel target. Hence the clock results have been manually reset to zero, not something I manually override very often but this is just to give you a visual indication of a fail. Uh, otherwise, the much larger Mugen 5 basically performed identically with both pastes. More on this later. The acoustic Cinebench R20 results show more of the same. Tolerance eats up any differences between both pastes with both coolers. And same goes for Hitman. It might be slightly jarring to look at the left graph but it's much easier when you focus focus on the shades of orange for frames of second or frames per second data and shades of blue for CPU data. Anyway, tolerance eats up all the differences here. So on to the full speed test results. The L9i did manage to complete the full 10 minute run of Prana T5, uh, but was only about 5 degrees or so off thermal throttling and likely crashing completely. Remember this is delta T uh, numbers here, not raw temperature data. Something I found rather interesting was the extra 25% speed of the Mugen 5's fan took it up to 38 decibels, or with an A weighting, which is 1.5 dBA higher than previously, and doing so added about 140 RPM, which is only about 10% more speed, but didn't change the thermal results, which stays within tolerance of the last run. I found that a bit odd. And just for completeness, I'll show you the Cinebench and Hitman results, but there's nothing to thermally identify which paste is better here. I originally was testing with GTA 5 as well, but after some later complications with getting the benchmark up and running, and the realization that the load wasn't that dissimilar to Hitman's, I just dropped it so I don't waste any of my time with working with a dodgy sign-in system, and a more complex benchmark considering my current workflow. And waste your time now and in the future running through a benchmark with a similar load. Okay, so maybe that didn't turn out like you or I was thinking it would. I was thinking Arctic MX2, MX4, uh, there is a higher thermal conductivity with MX4, but somehow that doesn't turn out into better heat transfer. Um, and I decided to test with the two coolers, a 37.5mm cooler and a 155mm cooler, to give a good idea of, of you know, something that has strong thermal transfer, as in the, the um, um, Mugen 5, and something with a lesser uh, thermal transfer, uh, such as the L9i. One slightly useful bit of information to know is that during the, the test like Pro 95, uh, we are hitting uh, over 100 watts, about 110 watts with that then. So uh, if you are, say, if you've overclocked one of your uh, CPUs and you're so well below 110 watts then you'll see sort of all you around the 110 watts you might see similar results. So I was curious to work out what Arctic thought of this so I sent over just a snapshot of one of the testing runs I had. Uh, like I said earlier on I did test this entirely twice. One testing run say if I was doing a 36.5 decibel um, testing run with the L9i I'd boot the system up I would uh, start off with Pro 95, uh, then I'd let the system cool down once I'd done the 10 minute test, then I'd start Cinebench, and then I'd let it cool down, and then I'd start Hitman, let it cool down, oh, then turn it off, uh, restart, and then go through all of them again, logging everything down as I go. So, uh, I've done that entirely with the L9i for the 36.5 dBA um, 
uh, test, the full speed test, the Mugen 5 full speed and the Mugen 5 uh, 36.5 DVA test um, with MX4 and MX2 entirely twice. Three runs for each test each. So that's probably taken me 20 hours or something to sort all that out uh, overall. I don't know actually, I haven't really counted, but it takes a good evening to, I don't, I don't know what's what, but anyway, a fairly amount, a significant amount of time. So I tested it twice to work out what was what, and then I sent an email to them and say, look, this is the kind of thing I've turned up with. Uh, no thermal differences as far as I'm concerned. Is there any other differences uh, that are, I don't know, um, tangible like durability, longevity, that sort of stuff. That's kind of the same thing. Anyway, they came back saying that NX2 has lower viscosity, so it can make it easier to apply. I screwed up exactly what they said, but the same sentiment. Um, I would say, uh, I, would, I, would, I would sort of, push back on that and say not really uh, it's not like one of them is like concrete that you have to uh, apply with like a shovel in a you know and put it like that and then shovel it off afterwards uh, they, they both can be applied from the tube spread out with the cooler um, well enough and they can be wiped away with with toilet paper and and don't even need isopropyl alcohol if it's fresh so I'd kind of push back on that and say Eh, not as far as I'm concerned, not really. Um, so then the second point was MX2 is better for long-term performance. So for people who don't change their paste regularly um, or ever, for example, using a lighting with a use in a lighting device, um, MX2 is a better choice. So that's going with sort of longevity. MX2 is the better for longevity. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so if you're not, you know, changing it frequently, and I don't change it frequently, um, then you might see better, better sort of results with MX2. I can't corroborate that. I can't say that is the case. Corroborate? Is that how you say? It? I don't know. Uh, I can't say that is the case because I change the thermal paste on all these systems and stuff every week, basically, when it comes to all the testing I do uh, when the channel's up and running. It hasn't been that like that lately, but, you know, that's the case. Then the third and final point was MX4 achieves better immediate thermal performance results, and uh, so it's recommended for people who change their paste more frequently every six months or so. Again, going to push back on that and say, doesn't really seem to be the case. If they both perform the same, fresh out of the tube, then I can't really say, I mean, if there's been a really old thermal paste and you change that thermal paste for either of them, they should technically perform the same. You're, you're working off a blank slate and building off it. And if what you're building off it has similar thermal performance, or the same as it turns out for my test anyway, then you're not going to get that this is an immediately better thermal performance than, than something else. So maybe it wasn't the point. Maybe I didn't get the point in that one. Maybe I missed a couple of points there. But as far as I'm concerned, it kind of doesn't really work so well. But what they do follow up saying afterwards makes a little bit more sense. Sorry for the long long Sorry for the length of this outro, by the way. I just want to you know clear up these points and make sure everyone's on the same page. So they say, I hope that helps. So I'd say you. So they're, they're referring to me here. So they say you could tell your followers it's a matter of personal personal preference uh, based on the viscosity they prefer and the frequency that they'll be changing their pace. So that's based on their advice. Um, so if you change it more frequently, MX4 might be the thing to go for. Um, but yeah. Um, but then they follow up saying, which is about as good as you can expect for any company out there especially when they're referring to their own products and perhaps data that doesn't quite align with what what their opinions are of it um, but you this is referring to me here but you should uh, also make your personal recommendation based on your test results so I gave them results saying they both perform the same and they said basically these are the reasons we think that it's better and we think you should recommend based on what you found that's as honest as you can you could possibly ask for for any company to be so um, is there a difference between the two Maybe. Is there something that I can detect based on my testing methodology? Not in a lab, um, not really. Uh, and I would say that for most people, not really as well. I think, I think, is it Dan's tech? Dan tech? I don't know. Um, they, uh, uh, he did some tests and based on the graphs that I saw skimming through his video, there was just no differences between them in terms of thermal. So eh, it's hard to justify me saying, buy this one because it's substantially better than this one. I would say, buy the one which is cheapest at the time uh, and yeah they're both uh, very good performers for their price uh, as far as I'm concerned uh, you can get you can get better performers but they cost a fair amount more price performance though they're pretty solid um, so that's kind of all I've got to say about that so Again, if you want to pick up yours, you can go to the Amazon affiliate links in the video description. And remember, it's that scan code if you want to win potentially $1,000. Don't make that the reason you buy this. Make it that it's good price performance. It was what you were going to buy anyway. You like it. 
so and so forth, uh, and that sort of thing. So that's all I've got to say on that one. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this. Uh, for people who are really into the channel and you want to know what's coming up, I'll go into that now. For the rest of you, thanks for watching this video. If you did like it, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, not necessarily about thermal paste. I'm more a case and CPU cooler guy, uh, but yeah, I will do bits and bobs here and there as we go through. I'll also be following up in the future with a, a, a very in-depth uh, version of the testing methodology explanation uh, so that people in future videos saying how do you do test these will have all the answers they could possibly want all in one place. As for those who stuck around to want to know what's coming up next, if, you, uh, if you're into the sort of channel a lot you might be on the Discord you'll already know a lot of this stuff but I will be testing the Silverstone LDO3, which is their mini ITX, uh, sort of tall mini ITX glass um, case chassis um, for um, for mini ITX cases. But yeah, uh, and I've also got the uh, Antec DP301M micro ATX case I've had on my shelf for about two months now. I was expecting to get back into things a bit quicker. I also have, well I got a 4K screen now, um, which is great, picked that up on, on a prime sale. Uh, I got to run that, so I've actually um, ordered in a, a cheap R9 380. The first one I had didn't work, so I've got another one on the way and the other one's been sent back, so that's that. So I won't do a video on that, but that's just an update anyway. And I've also got some new LED panel lights, which I haven't yet implemented, although I could. I've had them for nearly two weeks now. I want to do a small video on those, saying, you know, doing pros and cons and that sort of stuff with going from a standard softbox uh, CFL bulb setup to an LED panel. What are the pros and cons, such as the amount of light you get uh, for the size um, and the type of light you get and, and all that sort of stuff, and size, size differences and stuff like that some benefits like that and cost so thanks guys thanks for being so dedicated and stuck to the channel i really appreciate that and i will catch you in an upcoming video which i'll be starting which will be the silverstone ldo3 video i'll be starting in the next day or so thanks for supporting the channel and i'll catch you in the next one bye bye i kind of repeated that quite a few times there but you get the picture